ran into a former co-worker from Cracker Barrel. He remembered everyone I did, and we talked about several people. I also asked him if she, he remembered the hostess, and right away she, he said yes, uh, described her, and then said he thought she worked for the mob. And um, he was, she was always kind of talking shady, uh, like trying to get him to come over. Like, we went into detail about several people, you know, not related to the Russian investigation, but we mentioned her as well. And I did explain to him after he said that mob stuff, that the uh, Russian mob is a part of the Kremlin. And, you know, she was a part of the Russian operation to elect Trump. And um, talked for a good while. It was good. Uh, it reminds me of, I was in a haircut a few months ago, and I recognized the page for our area was LGBT for the Target controversy. So I decided to ask more gay people if they went into this woman. The uh, guy cutting my hair actually did know who she was. She had said some things to him. And if he had thought of her as like the gypsy from that movie Thinner, I ain't never seen Thinner, but uh, anyways, they uh, and then my other friend, and there's some correlations and something else shady I won't get into here, but yeah, he said he was trying to get her, she was trying to get him to move in too when he needed a place. And uh, I'll just say a few things she talked about uh, besides knowing Trump was running a picking pin. She showed me Facebook games and said one would pop up on my page when this was going on, and it did open on its own. And she showed me a clip art from Island Experiment, I believe. She said that uh, this art costs like $50 to buy, and it costs nothing to make. It's excellent money laundering. I've watched Ozark. Usually it takes 15% of your money to wash it, but with no overhead like in a Facebook game, it's pure profit. And uh, kind of like a casino, which Trump ran for the Russians. And um, it's white collar crime, but there was more to it. She also was doing the Target stuff, the deep state stuff, the fake news stuff. And she was saying that uh, at area, the LGBT page saying it was going to have to put up signs against the city council because of the Target trans ban. And that the ban with the signs in it would also be loaded with fertilizer. It was a uh, type of setup to call me a terrorist or something like that. And uh, that site did message me to put up signs during that time, but I recognized she could be a part of it. This was just another layer of their BS. And there's several, several layers. It's insane. I thought at worst it was a cult, not an intelligence operation. And um, when I finally found out it was Russia, it was when I mentioned I had ran into a clandestine operation or two on our soul. Like, I don't know, my friend had, was homeless when we were teenagers, and he text him about some old guy had him at his house and wanted him to do something he didn't want to do. So I rode over there and there was like a movie camera in there. This was like 2002 or 2006. It was around, yeah, 2006. And um, it was just an army house. It was his own kids was in there. And I think I met him 10 years later, the general's kids, but he had taken New Balance shoes from Walmart. I'd ask if it was food or electronics, you know, like you're going to send him to Iraq for this. And because he told me he had to go for a whole nother year. And um, it was, I won't go into more than that, but she did say, oh, no, you were right. It was actually a pedophile ring. That's the whole U.S. government. That's Hillary Clinton. That's Pizzagate, you know, like she was trying to push. And um, I was like, then she started talking about the Middle East, saying, oh, yeah, they start wars there so they can fill their coffers with, you know, children because who would know they're missing in a war-torn area? And I'm like, this sounds like Eastern propaganda. Who would make this? This isn't ISIS. This isn't nobody like this. It's Russia. I'm fairly certain. And then I noticed all the anti-democratic stuff and like how the conspiracies against every living president, but not uh, Trump, like Saudi Arabia and like Russia own this man because they buy hotel rooms at exorbitant prices as a way to bribe him. And he's been a, uh, I don't know, not his mental illnesses, I don't know what makes him so perfect of a tool. Maybe he has no soul and he, you know, will sell out our country. He's already denouncing our military intelligence for profit. That is treason. But uh, what else did she talk about besides Facebook pages? She showed me a meta Facebook with a, well, was a picture of it with emoticons and ad space. And said, this is what your Facebook will look like in 2016. And the story was about Syria. And um, the ad space was for that LGBT page. And um, and I can't believe she was saying that about Hillary Clinton when she had already told me that they 
had an access Hollywood tape. She was worried Bush was going to cost Trump the election. She didn't mean George Bush, she meant Billy Bush. She read me the transcript. And then she also told me he bragged the stern about watching underage girls and dress in Moscow. Like, why are you saying this about Clinton when you have all the proof on Trump? Like, that's what pissed me off about the conspiracies, too. I'm like, well, I want to see a little bit of proof, like some money, changing hands, like something. But it was just, uh, like, she wanted people to order Amazon stuff and return it. Like, it was just a way to hurt Amazon's who Trump targeted, too, because they also own the Washington Post, which is a liberal newspaper. Like, it was just things in play, and it was very crazy. But let's see the clip part, the Facebook, knowing Trump was running. She also knew he picked Sessions because she knew we'd have a special election. She showed me a picture of Doug Johnson's gay son, and I said, I've never met him on Grinder. Um, oh, and there was another thing. She told me our city council was deep state, and to be standing in the middle of my road to prove it. And I was like, how would being in a vulnerable position be proving that? And when they built the fire station, that did, in fact, happen. And I asked why he was there, and he said, oh, the fire from Chapel. And I was like, how would they know that? That's a bit well two times out, but whatever. Like, they got several things right, like saying I'd even work for Walmart. And... I didn't really believe that yes, and that was the only place they called me back when I needed a full-time job during this time. And it was a month before the trans and all this got in motion. And almost everything that happened that was really shocking and startling to me happened there. And it was oftentimes by employees. Like one of them said, oh, they'll find something criminal on you, or they say you're mentally unstable. They Either way, they will discredit or make you shut up. And then she used me a Facebook game, too, and was like, oh, they want you to play. I'm like, no, I've been over this. Like, that's not what it is. And, like, a lot of people have been fed it, but... The terminals at work were either being hacked or Walmart sent on it because they started saying things. I'm like, what? And um, a lot of stuff happened there. People were afraid of the back room, and it, I had a similar experience. It reminds me of the Cuban embassy attack. Like, it's hard to describe what happened, but the symptoms are similar. And um, I had tried to the Fed right before then, but it was more about how trying to just what had just recently happened maybe at Walmart like I was looking at the big picture and when I when that happened to me I couldn't put it together until pretty much after the election it shook me I couldn't even stock shelves I couldn't follow an intelligence operation right then and um I don't know it's just all the truth just letting y'all know Trump's a 